Hello and welcome back to the Eyes of Old Gaming channel. Thank you so much for being here. Today I have another older game in my What Is It? and Is It Worth It? game review series. In this video I will go through the various aspects of the game, trying my best to avoid spoilers for new players, and give examples of similar games as well as my personal opinion as to whether I would recommend the game with a thumbs up or thumbs down, and if I personally enjoyed it. I won't be giving a number rating to the game, as many other channels do, as I find this to be a very arbitrary way of rating games, which like any other entertainment is completely subjective, and instead I prefer to give enough info for you to make a decision on your own if you would like to go forward with picking up this title for yourself. What happens when a private investigator gets embroiled in a Lovecraftian horror mystery? Today we are looking at Call of Cthulhu, a survival horror RPG developed by Cyanide and published by Focus Home Interactive. Call of Cthulhu was released in 2018, so it's only a few years old at this point. So let's break this one down, see what the game is and what it's all about, and try to determine together if this game is right for you in a spoiler-free investigation of this game. Call of Cthulhu takes place in the 1920s, and you begin the game by playing as the protagonist Edward Pierce, a private investigator located in Boston. He has an established character backstory filled with nightmares, sleeping pills, and alcohol. The game gives you choices as you progress whether you will encourage his alcohol advice or if you prefer to refrain, which the game reminds us will affect your destiny. More on this later. Very quickly in the story, you will be contacted for your services to investigate a case involving the wealthy and influential Hawkins family. Once you arrive on the island of Darkwater to begin the investigation, the game really kicks off. In terms of the actual gameplay, the game feels mostly like a puzzle solver, as well as a virtual point and click. Instead of the classic point and click games with a static image that you click on the clues, you'll explore environments and try to find the clues which will point you in the right direction of the story. It is definitely encouraged to find any and all clues you can, as specific information which you gather can be used to unlock unique dialogue options with characters. Dialogue is another huge aspect of the game. You'll be speaking with a number of different characters as you progress, learning information about the case, their backstories, and their involvement in the overall plot of the game. It's also a good idea to exhaust all options here if you're interested in learning about the story and what is really going on on the island. Aside from the exploration and dialogue, the game does have some RPG elements. You have a skill tree which you will develop along the way, the skills are upgraded with points, as well as some skills requiring you to find specific items along the way to upgrade. For example, to upgrade your medical knowledge, finding medical techs are required. Don't expect the game to have a high action experience though. This is a much more methodical exploration and story driven game. There are a few stealth sequences which become more numerous around the halfway mark, as well as a near finale shooting combat chapter However, the combat mechanics are extremely simplified and simply serve to add some extra tension during your rush to the climactic conclusion. The game environments all follow the same dark horror aesthetic and really keeps you in the overall mood of the game. Some chapters present unique exploration zones as well as providing puzzles which must be solved in order to progress. However, the game will typically follow a set style of objectives which include locating clues and specific items or information, recreating scenes, and finding the exit point. Graphics are okay. The environments are all dark and dreary which fit with the overall theme. However, the quality seems like a game which is a little older than this one. I was actually surprised when I looked up the release year for this title as I had assumed it was at least 5 years or older based on the graphical quality. It is not to say that the graphics are terrible or seriously take away from the experience, but considering games like Red Dead 2 are the same age as it, it is surprising especially considering the exploration and detail are the main focus of the game. The NPCs have a unique look which I found a little odd and off-putting at first, however given time they did stand out less and became more normal for me. It's as if they have an exaggerated detail and the wrinkles and lines in their facial features will really stand out. Though it does seem odd at first, given the feel of the game, it does fit in with the theme and should feel more normal as you progress. 
Aside from some strange graphical and cosmetic glitches, I did not experience any major bugs with the game. The graphical issues which were encountered were easily overlooked and did not take me out of the immersion. Movement is slow and can feel a little lumbering, though as this is a fairly slow paced game without the need for quick reaction times, it is really not a problem. The game makes references throughout that your destiny is changed based on the choices you make. Depending on whether you do or do not do certain things, you can end up with different endings. Don't expect a huge range though, although the endings can have major consequences for the world after the game, you will simply be treated with a different cutscene in the final sequence. Honestly, I wouldn't put too much thought into this, just play the game in the most enjoyable way for you, as you won't be missing out by getting a different ending over another. After some research I found out there are only 4 unique endings, as it is, and I was not inclined to do a second playthrough just to see their respective cutscenes. As far as games I would compare to, I can draw some connection with Hellblade, as this is a very story driven game with puzzle solving. Another similar game would be Outlast, the common ground here being that this is an exploration game, not a combat game. Your main objective is to walk around finding clues and specific items, not engaging enemies. Would I recommend the game and did I enjoy it? Yeah, sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, sure, I could recommend this game, as long as you go into it with the right idea of what it is. The story is interesting and there is enough ups and downs, twists and turns to make the mystery side of it intriguing. Again, don't expect fast paced action gameplay. This is a great one if you're looking for a slower, easy playing game, with more emphasis on the story side of things rather than the gaming side. Though the game does feel more dated than the release date would suggest, it's not enough to make it unplayable, just enough that it is noticeable. The artistic style is unique and probably will not be to everyone's taste, however the odd nature of it does fit with the overall theme of the title and makes sense for the game aesthetic. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my take on Call of Cthulhu. I hope it was informative and entertaining. If you enjoyed the video or if it helped you to decide if you're going to pick up this game or not, please consider giving me a like on here. If you enjoy my content, also consider subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate it as well as all your feedback as it inspires me to continue creating content. And I love sharing my passion for gaming with others. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, take care.